Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna look at the PlayStation 5 buying guide in 2024. Let's talk about it. So, where to start? We got the consoles, we got some games, we got some accessories to talk about. So, I'm gonna give you my honest review about the PlayStation 5, what you should, shouldn't do in this year. So, first thing, buy a PlayStation 5? Absolutely. Just, yeah, it's the best console out there, man. It's so much fun. There's so many great exclusives. It's just blowing my mind. My number one used console of this year, of course, is this console, the PlayStation 5. As you can see, I've got multiple models of the PlayStation 5 because it's my job to teach you guys, like, what to do, what not to do with the PlayStation 5. Like, it's just, it's what I do. So, if you want to get yourself a PlayStation 5, now is a fantastic time. Go on Amazon, get yourself a PlayStation 5 for $684. In Australia, you can also get the same price at JB Hi-Fi. Now's the time where you absolutely should get a PlayStation 5. That's such a good price, such a great deal. They, you just gotta get it. So that's what I recommend for you. Now you could go the pre-owned route. Now, there's two different ways you could go about the pre-owned route. You could go physical, look around for like pre-owned games in shops like the CEX shop in Australia. We have that and in the UK, they also have that shop. They sell the PlayStation 5 Slims and disc editions for decent prices. They are a little bit higher than on like Amazon or eBay pre-owned. But what you're getting is to actually see the console. You know that it's fairly tested. You know that it's working, you can see it with your own eyes. That's like the safest way to buy a PlayStation 5 pre-owned. Get it for a pretty decent price, but definitely not better price than that deal that's going on right now. So if not right now, wait for like Black Friday sales. It's definitely the best time to get a PlayStation 5 throughout the year. Now, should you get the disc edition? Should you get the digital edition? I always say go disc because you can get pre-owned games. It's gonna be a lot better for you with the cost affordability. We all know that the PlayStation 5 is one of the more expensive consoles to go for, but it's definitely worth it because the gameplay experience is so good on the PlayStation 5. Everyone loves it, right? It's so much fun. So you can get a PlayStation 5 pre-owned for about $6.95 at the exchange shop. So it's not the cheapest way to get a PlayStation 5, but it's definitely one way to get a PlayStation 5 that you know is in great condition. You can also get boxed versions, but it's gonna be over $700. So it's up to you if you want to get the boxed version or not. Honestly, if you're getting a pre-owned model, don't worry about the box. Like, as long as you know the PlayStation 5's actually in good condition, you've physically checked it out, they've done the test, you know that's an A-class model, it's probably gonna do the job, you know? So I don't recommend maybe getting the extra box. I don't think it's really worth the extra, extra amount. So. Definitely get that. I do love the face plates. Like I've been a big fan of a lot of these face plate collections and some of the controllers. So they're also really great to buy. Some of my favorite accessories. Of course, I'm gonna say the Spider-Man collection is actually pretty solid, but it is a lot more expensive. I'm not gonna say recommend this for like every single person out there, you know, cause it is super expensive, but it is amazing. And I really, really like it. The Sterling Silver Collection, Cosmic Red Collection, all of those collections are awesome. The Grey Camo Collection was also one of my favorite collections. So those face plates are awesome. I love the ability to customize your PlayStation 5 and it's just been some of my favorite accessories to get. The only other accessories that I get are SD drives. I got this WD Black SD drive that's been working really well for me, but it's definitely slower transfer times and a lot of other PlayStation 5 SD drives and all that, but I like it. Internally, I also have the WD Black internal SSD as well. It's definitely something that I use every single day. Apart from that, just getting extension cords. So, you know, USB cables. So getting something that's like three meters long, probably not three meters, but just one meter. I recommend just getting threaded cables. They're a bit better. They're only like 25 bucks as well, max. So it's definitely something worthwhile to get. With the DualSense Edge, you actually get one as well, but I don't really recommend the DualSense Edge. I just recommend the normal DualSense controller. You're gonna get everything you need in that controller. Now let's talk about eBay. So eBay is a little bit risky, but I have some tips. So the number one way to go about it is 
You want to look at the decent prices, what goes around. So around that $500 range. From there, you basically want to look at the star rating, the reviews of the seller, see if that's in good condition and everything like that. Definitely check the description and also see if there's actual photos of the PlayStation 5. Everything from top to bottom, if there's more than four photos that really describe the PlayStation 5, you see that it's in great condition and everything, then I would definitely go for it. But it's definitely a risky thing. There are returns, but make sure that you buy something that has like the return option on because some people turn the return options off, say that's an unreturnable. So you definitely want to go for the returnable option just in case you really want to back yourself because it's not cheap to buy a PlayStation 5, but if you can find a really good one on eBay, that's about $500 to $600. Pretty good, man. Like, as long as you have everything ticked off the box there, I'm pretty sure you will pretty much be safe. But I definitely think the safest way at the moment is by going through like Amazon, JB Hi-Fi, big retailers, because you actually get to see it in front of you getting a pre-owned, probably go through the exchange shop and see it right in front of you, know that's A-class, you never know. So you gotta be safe about these things. Should you get the Slim or should you get the disc console? Slim's the newest console, um, it's a lot obviously slimmer, lightweight, it doesn't have the USB-A connections at the front, it just has USB-C connections at the front. But that's the only real difference, detachable disc drive, which no one's ever gonna worry about anyway. Just normally go disc. With Slim, it's gonna obviously limit you to only digital downloads where you don't really own all the games if you just download them. Whereas you can actually resell once you finish with a game. You know, there's more advantages to getting the disc version of a game more than the, the digital version. The original console is still awesome. Still a young console, like it was still only released like four years ago. And during that time period, there's more consoles that are 10 years that are still in great condition. So it's still absolutely fine to get yourself a pre-owned PlayStation 5. Most of the time you'll be fine. Now let's go on to some games. So these are my top 10 most played games on the PlayStation 5 so far. So the first one is that Miles Morales and Spider-Man Remastered collection that's going on here. It's so good, highly recommend it as well as Spider-Man 2, of course, which we'll talk about later. Of course, it was a staple for the PlayStation 5 to get this back in when it was first released in 2020. And it's an awesome game. You get two games in one, great price for it. You can get it pre-owned for a really good price now. So highly recommend it. If you have uh, even a membership, I believe this will be on the PlayStation Plus membership. I believe, I hope I'm not wrong about that one. All right, Assassin's Creed Mirage. So a lot of people don't really like Ubisoft, but I really like Ubisoft to be fair. I think they put out great games. If you see my channel, you know that I love Assassin's Creed games. This one has like a smaller city and it's just based in one whole city, but it's still really fun. I actually really enjoyed this game. Definitely give it a go. It's really good for sneaking, really good for OP characters, man. The, the DLC in this game, like if you buy like the extension packs and all that, you are so OP in this game. So it's definitely a fun game to just get through and enjoy the PlayStation 5 with. Red Dead Redemption 2, now it's not a PlayStation 5 game, but it's good enough to be a pretty much PlayStation 5 game. One of the best open world cowboy games ever made. One of the best games ever made. You gotta try it. Awesome storyline, awesome open world, super amazing game. Like, wow, I got this pre-owned for like 28 bucks. The biggest deal of my life. Like it was one of my favorite games of all time, starting from last year. Came in the game pretty late with that one, but mate, I've played that game for hours. It's so good. Mortal Kombat 1. This game came by surprise, but the story mode's only like a couple of hours long and you can get through it 100% pretty easily. Overall, really fun like online fighting game to play. Overall, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this Mortal Kombat game. I think it's one of the best fighting games to pretty much come out with the PlayStation 5 this year, pretty much. Got a War Ragnarok, one of the best storylines in gaming, one of the best voice acting in gaming, and one of the best worlds in gaming. It's just incredible. I love the Nordic mythology that they went into. Everything about this game is just 
packed full of stuff to do. It's so much fun. It's not open world. It's definitely got a storyline. You can complete it in about 150 hours, but it's still so much gameplay to go through. And it definitely challenges you at moments, but it's definitely a, it's a spectacle, man. This game is so, so good. Definitely recommend God of War Ragnarok, man. FC24, now this will surprise a lot of people, but I am a big fan of football. I do play a few football career modes on my channel. Have really enjoyed this game. I just love the GM mode. It's one of my favorite things to do. It's just manage teams from like lower leagues, bring them up to the Premier League. I absolutely love it. I'm addicted to it, man. Hogwarts Legacy, can you believe it? So since last year, I've been playing this game. I got through about 60% of this game and I really enjoyed learning the magic just exploring Hogwarts I was in awe of Hogwarts honestly the character creation is great the character customization with like all the different mini pickup items that you get and you can customize your uh, character as you go uh, you learn so much about Hogwarts along the way and you learn so much about Harry Potter along the way Wish there was more Quidditch involved in the game, but that's just me. I think they should release just maybe just a Quidditch game by itself. Um, maybe it could be a DLC in the future. I do hope so. I think they need to expand on the world and keep going with it because it is such an awesome idea. Some people don't like it because maybe there's not the main characters of, of Harry Potter in the game, but there's enough there for you to enjoy an open world Harry Potter game. It's so awesome. Spider-Man 2. Of course, you can get through this game in a couple of days and you will have the time of your life. Definitely one of the best storylines that keeps changing. A lot of cutscenes that are really enjoyable. It's like watching a movie, a very cinematic Spider-Man game. It's definitely one of the coolest Spider-Man games ever because we could play as Venom. Mate, like, it is so good. We got Kraven the Hunter, we've got so many cool bad guys such as Harry Osborn in the game as well. So it's got a huge storyline and definitely a game that I recommend and the most played game out of my PlayStation 5 collection. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys want to like and subscribe, support the channel, make sure you do so. Make sure you give me your tips about a PlayStation 5 buying guide. See you guys next time.